right now. Corey, what, what do you think is the importance in, in Tuesday's election? Um, I think the importance is uh, actually having people come out and, and voice you know, their concerns. And I think when they come to the ballot box on Tuesday, they're going to show what their concerns are in government. I think there are going to be a lot of races. They're going to change hands. You're going to see some incumbents who um, won't be incumbents anymore, <laughs> quite <laughs> frankly. Um, I think some people are just sick and tired of what's going on in government, and they need to come out and make their voice heard. Well, of course, as Corey said, the most important thing is you got to get out and you got to vote. You got to go, uh, as he said, have your voice heard. Now, I tend to believe that it's best if we continue on the path that we're going. I know things have been slow in terms of reco recovery when it comes to the economy and some things domestically, but it took 10 years for us to sort of dig ourselves in this hole from both sides of the political spectrum, Democrats and Republicans in power. And you can't really expect only two years of the Obama presidency and the Democratic Congress to really get us out of that hole. I think that uh, if we have the Republicans in charge again, we'll see uh, politically, we'll see a return to some of the policies that uh, were in place during those 10 years where we were spending so much money, when uh, we were neglecting some of the uh, more domestic things that we should have been paying attention to. Uh, but most importantly, you got to get out and vote. And I think that uh, out of everything, if people want to have their voices heard, you can only have that heard one way, and that's at the ballot box. Corey, what do you think, what do you think this election is going to do for, I guess, forecasting in 2012? for um, the presidential race in 2012? Yes. Yes. Well, that's an interesting question because uh, a lot of times in political science, you know, we talk about um, you know, these presidential coattails and, and you know what happens in midterm elections. Does it really forecast what's going to happen in 2012? Um, I think it will. Um, quite frankly, I think if we have an influx of Republicans, conservatives, whoever it is uh, in, in office uh, after this Tuesday, then I think it's going to be um, bad news bears for Obama <laughs> um, and, and the rest of the Democrats. And, and again, you know, this, this is a uh, party change possibly in the making, um, the way I see it. Well, this is, it's so tough to tell so far away from uh, 2012. Uh, I know we like to sort of micromanage things and talk about every election back to back to back, but it's, it's really tough. You look at uh, independents, which are going to be huge. They were huge in the 2008 election, the 2004 election. Uh, they were huge in 2006, and I think they're going to be huge again, not only in 2010, but in 2012. Right now, they seem to be shifting towards the Republicans, uh, which will most likely lead to a sea change in Congress. However, uh, you never know where they're going to stand when it comes to uh, presidential politics in 2012. Will they still be the Republicans? Will they shift back to the Democrats if they ha as they have been since 2006? Uh, it it's so tough to really uh, to gauge that this far out, but I think uh, the Republicans, they're going to have some momentum behind them. I hate to say it, but we're probably going to see a loss of the House of Representatives. Uh, I think the Democrats will hold on to the Senate, but it it's too far to tell right now as far as what it's going to do in 2012. Okay, we just want to end with one word or a few words of what you want to say to anyone who wants to stay home on, on Tuesday. If you don't vote, you can't complain about it. Well, Corey, you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, get out there and vote. I know uh, a lot of you guys want to have your voices heard. Uh, you've been disaffected maybe in the last uh, several elections, but the only way to have your voice heard is if you go to the polls and vote. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Letters, letters, and more letters. That's what filled the seats and lit up the stage at German Auditorium last Tuesday. The new members of CPC and IFC sororities and fraternities sang along and danced to their favorite tunes for the annual event known as Lip Sync. And even throughout the competition, members showed Greek unity, cheering each other on. It was unreal just to have the whole uh, the Greek community just uh, to be there and support you, and it was, it was a really great experience. Definitely a fun experience. It's good to see everyone come together and, you know, welcome our new members. It's definitely a tradition that uh, strengthens and gets larger and larger um, each year. Uh, you know, tonight Jarman was nearly to max capacity. I'm not going to be surprised if in the spring it's uh, max capacity early on. We sell out tickets early on. Um, it gets bigger and better every year. This year's winners for best overall were Tri Sigma and Theta Chi. The men's basketball season is officially underway. The team held its first practice Friday, October 15th. Nathan Epstein sat down with Longwood head coach to discuss the first days of practice. 
Sitting here courtside in Willard Hall, I'm Nathan Epstein sitting here with Coach Gillian and Coach heading into the season. Practices have gotten underway and uh, just basically what are your feelings as you uh, head into the first week of practice? Well Nathan, it's always interesting when you get started uh, to see where everybody is that should know uh, what they're doing and how they're doing it and then where everybody is that's new and, and get a chance to actually get in the gym and evaluate those guys. We have a, an interesting group right now. We have an excellent returning core group of players that are veterans and understand how we're going to play, what we're going to do in combination with a, a group of new guys that are very talented but have a way to go to learn about some of those things. So that combination uh, has been interesting. That's the best way to put it. But the one thing I'll say is uh, we have a group that's working very hard. And um, before you really get started here playing games, the one mantra that we live by is give maximum effort. And, and that's what we've done to this point. As long as we continue to do that, I think individually uh, guys will get ready to go and collectively they'll, they'll start to mesh well together. Well, you, you said that you definitely have uh, some returning guys. Duran Neal will be back on the floor, Martez Washington along with Antoine Carter. But you've also lost uh, a great deal of your scoring. And I don't want to say that you have a totally different team. You just have a couple of different tools to work with here. So considering the team that you have now, what were some of the main points of emphasis uh, as you started the first week of practice? Well, uh, you mentioned those guys, Dana, Kevin, Billy, and EJ. They did a fantastic job. We're, we're a big, big part in the success that we've started to have here in the last couple of years. And you can't really look to replace those individuals with somebody else. It's not where you can just plug somebody into that. Uh, but I do feel like the returning guys can, can certainly do what they've done a little bit better to sort of absorb some of that. And then we've got to start to find out what can these new players do. And the most important thing heading into the season, of course, is you want your players to be healthy heading into practice. How is the health of your team right now? Really, really good. The guys are physically prepared and are physically prepared without having any significant injuries. We, we've not had anybody miss any time in practice yet. We've worked very hard. Uh, we're not babying them by any means. so. Uh, we got to hope that that continues. And the last thing I will ask you is, in the first couple of days, as we said before, you have a new mold of guys that you're working with, with some of the returning players. What do you think are some of the strengths and weaknesses of your team as you prepare for the first game? I think our strength is in the fact that we have a lot of interchangeable parts. Another one of our strengths is uh, keeping in that perimeter play theme. We have a lot of guys that are very talented offensively. They can score, they can shoot, and I think that will show through. Our weakness probably is in that some of these new guys need to quickly develop the abilities that the veterans have. How quickly can they learn one position, learn what they have to do first so they can be good at that and then they can sort of blossom and grow into understanding what the other guys are doing so we can play well together. That's a big challenge for us. Head coach Mike Gillian giving his thoughts as practice has opened up. It opened up Friday. October the 15th, and now they are set to prepare for Virginia Wise, November the 18th. That's when the season opens up. I'm Nathan Epstein from Willard Hall for the Rotunda Show. Registration for intercession and spring classes is right around the corner, and classes for the semester have already been posted on my Longwood. For degree-seeking students, seniors, graduates, honor students, athletes, and approved students with disabilities, registration will begin on November 1st. Juniors will register on November 4th, sophomores register on November 8th, and freshmen are November 10th. Non-degree seeking registration will open on the 30th of November. Thank you for tuning in and be sure to grab a copy of the Rotunda on newsstands today or log on to www.therotundaonline.com. I'm Tara Carr and from everyone here at the Rotunda Show, we will see you next time.